All right, here we are at our 2013 Hurricane 2400 Sun Deck for sale. We're here just off the beautiful fresh waters of Norris Lake, Tennessee, which you can partially make out through those trees over there. This is thought to have been a two-owner freshwater boat. Came to the Norris Lake area by way of Lake Lanier in Georgia. We do have a bow and cockpit cover. That's what's laying over there on the tongue. This is a Tandem Maxwell trailer with dual brakes, two inch ball, five flat wiring hookup. This is in need of new tires if you're from outside of the area and looking to head down the interstate with this. Uh, we will want to make arrangements to have new tires put on this trailer before you head down the uh, before you head down the interstate. If you're around the North Lake area, you can probably get by, especially if, especially if the boat's heading to the water, and the trailer's just going to head to a field or a barn somewhere. So we can uh, we can make uh, accommodations to have those tires put on. Um, and this is, a, this is a fairly low hour boat. It's powered by a Mercruiser V8 350 mag, which is 300 horsepower. It's got a Bravo 3 dual prop out drive. About 257 engine hours on this one. We're here for our video walkthrough tour. And as always, we do like to remind you, visit the website, www.yournewboat.com. See the current asking price, as well as the, fuel, the full list of features and specifications and options. This is a 24 foot LOA. I believe it's about eight and a half foot beam and comes in just just under 4,600 pounds dry. What does dry mean? Dry is without any fuel, water, or gear on board. So you do need to check your, uh, if you're, if you're uh, looking at your vehicle's tow capacity, um, you're going to want to add, add about 1,500 for the trailer and probably another um, thousand pounds, well, six to eight hundred pounds for your fuel and gear on board. Uh, but again, you always want to be conservative with those numbers. So we do have a four-step swim boarding liner here at the uh, swim deck, a little integrated swim platform. Goes uh, over top of that Bravo 3 dual prop out drive. We do have a, a little uh, LED underwater light. Here's your uh, ski tow hook. This is for pulling your skiers and tubers. And we've got basically a little uh, convertible rear bench seat. I've got that in the seated position. I've got snapping carpeting in the boat. Oh, show you what I mean here. So here's that storage underneath this seat. Now we'll lift up. We've got a small little drain in there. So if you put your uh, life jackets and ropes and other gear like that, that uh, they will we will uh, drain it out and then basically all it takes is a little lift up like that. This, this base is going to go right that when you're in the seated position. Fold that flat and now it's, now it's a little sun lounge. We do have a bimney top overhead. We basically function tested everything we could on this one. And everything appears to be working just fine. I don't think we found anything that did not work correctly on this one. So I always like whenever you've got the little walkthrough without having to step on these seats, and that's probably why uh, the upholstery in this one is uh, remains in good condition today. We do have some pollen in here, here. This has been stored outside with the cover on, and uh, we have had some pollen make its way underneath the cover. We've got a little removable lounge table, four cup holders integrated onto that. Now we've got a bunch of these little stainless steel cup holders throughout. I believe there's 13 of those. And this one's rated for 10, so nobody's going to get thirsty on this one. Got a small little uh, cockpit sink. Okay. Pull out a uh, handheld shower there. 12 volt power outlet right here. There's no 12 volt power outlet there to your uh, driver's seat. Um, this one, I believe this one carries about 56 gallons of fuel. And I believe we've got uh, an estimated uh, 10 gallon fresh water tank. And of course we've got the the driver and passenger flip up bolster seats. I mean, that's going to lay down flat like that, a little bit of water dripping out the back. Bolster is in really good shape on this. And just flip that right up. These do, uh, these do swivel. 
Uh, same with your driver's seat here. There's that bolster in the down position. I've got some of that dirt there so we don't mistake it for uh, for any wear and tear. There's that bolster in the up position. Tilt steering wheel here at your helm. And we've got two cup holders down to your uh, driver's feet. That's one of your four stereo speakers. Two more cup holders right here at your uh, steering wheel. That is the stereo remote. We have a uh, Sony Marine. That is an AM FM USB auxiliary input uh, Bluetooth stereo. There's a second 12 volt power outlet right there. And we got four stereo speakers. Two back here in the uh, cockpit, two up in the bow. There's your drive trim gauge. Um, now this says for vacuum flush, so uh, there probably was an option to have an actual vacuum flush um, head installed in a little head compartment, which I'll show you here in a, in a moment. This is actually uh, your underwater light's been wired into that. Um, so your gauges here, we do have a um, cluster gauge right here that's going to show battery volts, uh, fuel capacity, engine oil pressure, and engine water temperature. Over here, we've got your uh, tachometer with a uh, integrated hour meter. Turn the key so you can see that right there. 256.9 hours, so we'll call that 257. Here's your speedometer right over here, and then a working uh, depth finder. And then here's your uh, switches. You do have a functional blower. There's your uh, main switch for your stereo. Depth finder switch, fresh water pump, that's for your onboard tank. You hear that power up when we flip that right there. Uh, courtesy lights, we've got three of those um, in the interior. One right here underneath your driver's seat. One right there at the uh, steps coming in off the transom. Another one right at the uh, bottom of the steps up there in the bow. Uh, we do have a function bilge pump. And navigation lights all work to red, your green, and your anchor light. Functioning horn. And docking lights, those also functioned as well. We pretty much tested all we could on this one. You have a nice large in-floor ski locker. Let me show you this right here, what we're talking about. we got some life jackets and your uh, cover pulls down in there. I would have dropped the covers down in there, but um, I laid those to just dry out a little bit. Two more cup holders over here, just in front of your passenger seat. We've got a compass mounted just above your uh, head compartment. It's so right here. Here's your little lockable head compartment. You can close that. We've got a little latch here. We can you're down inside of there you can close that now normally we would have a head or even a porta potty installed down here uh, that would have been an option and basically nothing's been installed down here you can easily mount a porta potty in there uh, you do have the stereo uh, that's your Sony head unit for your stereo so that's a uh, Bluetooth has been added that's basically plugged into the auxiliary uh, input and you do have a uh, USB uh, connection which is this right here so it's AM FM auxiliary uh, USB and Bluetooth and we just have a little access right there and a little, another little sink and, and also a little uh, port hatch for ventilation down there as well as a bullet tissue holder. All right so uh, two more stainless cup holders there and a third right there off that for passenger seat and then we can go through our walk through windshield also should point out we do have your wind block here this will slide over and goes in this little groove right here and then this is the locking mechanism you're going to pull that up slide it over and now that's not going to go anywhere so now if you close this windshield off you've got a full wind block that is great for those early and late season cruises sometimes even in the, uh, the middle of the summertime Sometimes even in the middle of the summer, late or early, you'll need that as well. So I showed you that uh, in floor ski lock and a little storage hatch right here. Lots of uh, storage in, in here. And I, I like how that is basically kind of boxed in so you can kind of pack that in without having to worry about something sliding around, having a hard time fishing it out later. Uh, and then like I said, we do have uh, this uh, carpeting we do have some pollen that's blown in here and then um, this is a little wet in here from some water that was on that cover but um, everything looks to be in good shape we've got storage integrated underneath your uh, seats up here in the bow and I notice all these uh, um, under seat storages have little uh, integrated drains small little nick in the fiberglass right there I'm going to point that out to you now 
And so, um, two more stainless cup holders here. There's your uh, third and fourth uh, stereo speaker, and then two more stainless cup holders over here. Same thing, storage underneath this seat. And then basically, this is a, um, a removable seat cushion right here. So if you're stepping on off the bow, you can pull that out of your way. And then this this would be where a uh, where a live well uh, would be an option um, to install. Now this one does have the live well switch, but that is not an option that is uh, equipped on this boat. Uh, but the, basically that's also is gonna double as a self-draining cooler in the meantime. And then we've got an anchor storage locker right here, anchor chain and road down in there. Pop-up cleat, we've got pull-up cleats all around. Um, we've got uh, seven of those, if you count the one there for your anchor. And then a three-step swim boarding ladder up here off the bow. Docking lights up here, your navigation lights, and then here, here's one of those other six pull-out cleats. You're gonna have uh, basically two near the bow, two in the middle of the boat, and two more near the aft. And let's step back down inside. We're gonna head towards our engine compartment. I'll flip our power switch on, and then I'm going to use our powered hatch. Let this raise up. This is one of the quietest hatches that I have come across yet. Do have uh, dual batteries with a uh, battery selector switch. Got ready to find out real soon whether or not I'm going to have to remove that lounge table to raise the engine hatch. Looks like it's got clearance. Lounge table is very easy to remove if you if you have to. Yeah, I can hear it touching just now. So let me give this a little spin right here. Simple as that. All right, now let's finish raising the hatch on up. So again, 257 engine hours on this. that powered hatch lifted all the way up and again this is a Mercruiser cruiser 350 mag inboard outboard bravo 3 dual prop stern drive engine this is 300 horsepower and again um, low time on this one lots of room down here as well here's those dual batteries those were replaced uh, I'll have it on the website I believe about 2020 Water pump impeller was replaced in 2021. I do have a jump box on there um, to assist with uh, basically raising that hatch since this one has really not been um, recommissioned yet for the spring. And uh, here's your battery switch under this seat right here. Again, there's another another drain in the uh, in the locker there. It is best to alternate on your battery switch. Alternate uh, between using battery one and battery two so that they both have equal time to get recharged. Just want to show you that uh, little concealed waste bin right there. It's always always nice when you've got one that's easy to access, especially whenever you don't have to raise a raise a seat or anything like that to access it. So that's always nice. Um, so that's pretty much going to do it for the uh, for the interior. Actually, before I leave the cockpit, there was one area of a stress crack. Uh, right underneath the windshield right here. Just want to call your attention to that. It's kind of where we start doing the wear and tear items. Uh, upholstery all looked very good. Uh, pretty much all the way around. It's in really good shape. Pretty impressed with this. Um, oh, here we are. thought I remembered seeing one other one other part up here on the, on the uh, deck. Now, this is basically just a plastic insert where your uh, blower vents are, are going to go out. But there is a little little scratch or crack on that. I'll leave that hatch up for now. Let's go ahead and head off. And before I step off, we had a little bit of a scuff right here in the vinyl. Um, just a little bit kind of scratching into the surface. It's not um, all the way through, but it is, it is kind of a, uh, it did break kind of the seam on that outer edge. So I do want to call your attention to that. So, all right, let me, uh, let me step off here. Here's that Bravo 3 um, outdrive. Uh, the shift bellows looked, uh, looked 
to be uh, serviceable on this um, as in not requiring any immediate attention um, and, the, and the props uh, props look to be in in good shape as well there is bottom paint on here and so now we got a few little marks on this one and we'll get up close and personal with this this is fairly a clean boat all the way around but we do have a little bit of uh most of the marks are are very light uh just breaking uh through the gel coat finish and uh and then a lot in the decaling um now this is this is through the gel coat that's why you see some white right in there okay so those two areas right there now this is well up above the water line um same here that's up above the water line that in my opinion that's all cosmetic um really no need to uh, to dress any of that now this um there's about three coats of this um copper free bottom paint on here and it looks like we got a little bit flaking off just back here on the back on this um probably this last coat uh for the most part that bottom paint all looks to be in in good shape now bottom paint you want on a boat anytime one's sitting in the water in a wet slip and you're not on a lift or being stored on the trailer so a little bit oh you know what i think all that's gonna come right off there i wasn't sure what that was but uh, all that little black right there is going to come right off. So we can move on from it. And then we do have some marks in your decaling up here. Another small little stress crack right here at the back of this little plastic cowling. Um, and some marks in your decaling. So that's where your, um, your blower vents from that that plastic piece was covering up. So your decaling's got some scratches in it. Um, that wasn't anything at all. And then now this is gel coat. Uh, this right here is vinyl. And that's vinyl. And this, can't tell what is what. So this is gel coat and this would be a white vinyl decal on top of it. So you get a little bit of a discolor. And then I believe this uh, red stripe is vinyl. Uh, so these marks right here in this, in this gray, this is not a decal here. That's actually gel coat. That's just barely through the gel coat. Other marks in your decaling up here and that one's going to be down into the gel coat um, same thing up here so we've got kind of this uh probably would call this a stone a um, little bit of mark in the gel coat of that stone and then this is going through a vinyl decal but all this kind of in this gray that is um that's actually the gel coat of the boat it's another good little mark right here fingers catching edge in that so that's not going anywhere um, and then you can tell this white and the red, that's definitely vinyl, the way that's peeling up right there. Small little scuff right there. That might go away with a good detail. And then we've got a little bit more of a darker gray accent vinyl striping. It's a few marks in it. And then here's, uh, it's down into the gel coat a little bit. And following that line up. And then this where we got some dock rash up here near the, uh, actually near your Tennessee decaling. Got some marks in that. That's in the vinyl. So again, none of this vinyl you really want to worry about. Uh, looks worse than it is. Now that is through the gel coat and then and then this these marks up here, that's all kind of into the gel coat. Now some of this is like a surface scratch because my fingernails, well, maybe it is catching a little bit of an edge right there. A really good uh, professional detailer can sometimes buff a lot of that out. And then a few more marks keep coming around the bow area. Um, this again, that's all in there, kind of the vinyl striping. Um, that is in your gel coat, that little bit of a scratch right there coming on around. So again, that's why I say most of this is worse than, than it really is. And now this area, that's into the gel coat. Uh, for the most part though, your, your bow line is, is pretty nice and clean. Now this is where your bottom paint starts right in here where you see this little bit of texture. Okay, so again, um, bottom paint's great if you're leaving the boat in the water because that's going to protect the hull from getting blisters on it. Um, that's why people do it. Um, so this one obviously would have been stored in the water and that's why they opted to put the bottom paint on there. So that is what you want to do. Um, now I don't think we, I showed you this, uh, marks in this white in this area right here. So we got a few little marks in here. That's just through the gel coat. Um, and then same in here, a little bit of, of dock rash right in the white through here. And of course we have photographs of this, the website too. So uh, we will have a direct link to this listing uh, just below the video tour here. All you got to do is scroll down to that written description. There'll be a direct link that will take you uh, to our website with this uh, listing. So um, if you copy and paste or click on that link, it's going to take you right to our photo slideshow page. 
And we do the slideshow page much like the video. You're going to have a walk around of photographs, uh, the interior shots, the engine room, and then we're going to go into wear and tear areas. So basically just about every, every area that I'm showing you in the video, there'll also be a photograph of. But again, most of that's going to look worse than it is. Now that is into the gel coat. Again, this is just your vinyl striping. It's got some marks in it. This uh, darker gray, the white, and the red, that's all vinyl. Uh, but now this is your gel coat. So see that right there is through the gel coat just a little bit. Um, and then same thing just under underneath in this white. And this is a little bit harder to show on video. I think it was showing up pretty well in the photographs. But even in person, if you're not at the right angle, you're not going to see it. So that's why when you come see this in person, it, it um, pretty much is, uh, looks worse than it actually is. And again, that's in your vinyl. Decaling right there. These marks in the gray, that's in your gel coat. So those aren't going to go anywhere even with a uh, good detailing, buffing a wax. Um, this, these three right in this area, those might go away with a good professional detail. They're not deep. And then again, this is some more wear in your striping. That's in the gel coat. Uh, vinyl striping. And again, here's some more marks in that gel coat right in there. And then we um, a little boo-boo on part of the Hurricane logo there. Took part of that with it. And that's into the gel coat there as are, as are these marks right here. And again, all this just because of how, the, um, how that shows up on that like stone um, accent probably looks a lot worse than it is but some of this is light some of the smaller stuff in here might disappear uh, when this is uh, buffed and wax some of the uh, darker ones probably aren't going anywhere and then a little bit of surface scratching just above the bottom paint right down here near the water line um, but again nothing really concerns me there That's down the gel coat a little bit there on that, where that end would be. So, and uh, again, as always, we don't mention the asking price in our video tours. Uh, that is because they will often change through our listing until the boat is sold. So that's why we do refer you to the website to find the current um, asking price as well as our contact information. We do not monitor the YouTube comment page. Uh, but again, we are putting a direct link to this listing for your convenience just below this uh, this video tour down in the written description. If you take time, open up a new tab or window, click that link, um, that's gonna take you there. You're gonna see the asking price right there, and then you're gonna see our contact information all over that uh, page, where you're gonna be able to reach out to us by phone, by text, or by email. We would do like to remind you, if you send us an email, if it's been one business day, you have not gotten a reply, please check your spam folder. We're usually pretty quick about replying to emails. We definitely get those turned around same business day, and a lot of times only in a matter of a couple hours. And um, if you call us on the phone, you get our voicemail. We are very frequently in areas without cell phone reception. So we do like to remind you to please leave us a message if you want to return a phone call. If you don't leave a message, there's a very good chance we're not going to have any idea that you called. Um, then you can also send us a text message. That's easier for you. But do uh, be sure to remember, let us know what listing you're looking at, what questions you have, uh, whether you send us a text or leave us a uh, voicemail. That way we can answer all those questions for you. And uh, as soon as we get back in cell phone range or finish with the customer. So again, this is a very low hour 2013 uh, Hurricane 240 Sun Deck, which is a great, great size deck boat uh, with a with a good size deep V to it. This is going to be a good riding boat here on Norris area, um, or if you're up on Lake Cumberland where you where you do get a little bit busier on the weekends, um, and you need a a larger boat to handle some of that uh, rough water. This would be a great option for you. Um, this is powered with a um, very popular uh, Merc Cruiser 350 mag with that Bravo 3 dual prop out drive. All right, that's going to uh, do it for us today. And again, please visit the website with any questions. And right about this time, you'll see the yournewboat.com logo pop up in the top right-hand corner of your screen. That's just a shortcut to subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already. We're always happy to have you as a subscriber. And I thank you very much for joining us.